clearly not our uh, best day. I told the team in the locker room uh, that obviously it falls on me. Um, we didn't execute at a high enough level. I thought they prepared all week. Uh, I thought they did a lot of good things uh, this week to prepare and put themselves in the right situation. We weren't able to go out there and execute. You know, obviously offense, the lack of run game continues to be a concern. Um, and, you know, we turned the ball over again, and then the issues in the kicking game uh, led to the decision at the end. You know, we missed an extra point. We may have not been in that uh, situation, but that's where we're at. And uh, we've got to find ways to improve. We've got to find ways to work. Um, two regular season games left. Uh, guys will have a lot of pride and will continue to, to believe and do it the right way. And uh, that's what's important. But uh, again, today was not good. It was not pretty in no way, shape, or form, and, and uh, it, not where we need to be in all three phases. Terry, hey, Coach, uh, the night nice offense, was it because of execution, something they did, or you just didn't do the thing you wanted to do at the level? Yeah, lack of execution 100% falls on. Uh, credit to them. They're, they're a good defense. Um, but 100% on us um, as, a, as a staff and as – as a, as an offensive unit, we just weren't able to execute the running game, weren't able to get going. Um, you know, lack of exp you know, we had a couple explosives, just not be able to put together drives. Um, they're six in the country on third and fourth down defense, and, and they certainly showed that today. Uh, we just didn't do a good enough job. Um, lack of being able to handle it, just it was a lackluster day by the offense altogether. And we can't just have to rely on one player to get us going. Um, as you guys saw, Calvin Austin. Um, I think he may have gotten two plays the entire first half. He w he wasn't able to practice all week. He, Calvin really hadn't been able to practice the last few weeks. He's a tough sucker, and uh, knew that he, you know he went in because he wanted to fight for his team, and that's the type of young man he is. Um, but he you know he's one of those guys that's just been able to get through it. But he he cares and continues to work, you know. Um, but yeah, lack of execution, one hundred percent on ourselves. Nothing. To do. Yeah, credit to them, but just not good enough on our end. You know, I was going to, and then I had flashbacks to the miss extra point. And I told my guys all along um, that we were going to be aggressive. And I think, you know, that's where we're at right now this year with what we want to be. Um, with a lack of a run game, I think you put yourself in, in, in opportune situations in, in overtime when you got 25 yard line in, and then it really condenses the passing game. And so that went through my thoughts. Um, all those things did, Jeff, you know, and uh, I had I had a little bit more confidence where we need to be. I, I probably would have kicked. Um, you know, our defense played a lot of snaps today. Um, you know, they're going to continue to feed Snead the ball. And then with our lack of execution on offense, other than the big play, I didn't want to risk that going out there. Um, and then the play itself, the call, what was the idea? No, it's a, it's a two-point play that we've had that's – got uh, multiple options for it uh, it's worked quite often I, I believe firmly in the call we just weren't able to execute it uh, they did a nice job defending it Brian even though you even though Kemp had kicked the field goal to send the game into OT what just kind of if there was trust in kicking the field goal then what was the reason behind not getting the chance for the PAT yeah I mean like I said the missed extra point earlier and then like I just mentioned you go to double overtime right you're gonna have to do Again, 25 yard line, and with us not being able to run the football, uh, it really condenses the field in the passing game. And so you start to sit there and say, okay, are we going to uh, take the ball? We'd get the ball back on the 25 again and, and go down there and score and then give our best two point play, which we tried to do uh, at the end of the first overtime. So um, when we got to that situation, I've just felt our best situation to win this game right now was by doing that. Uh, I didn't think we. We're going to put ourselves in an advantageous point um, to do it because if we didn't get anything, because we were going to be forced to throw. I mean, I think it was pretty obvious to everybody in there with the lack of run game. We were doing our only run game was with Seth bringing the ball down and running himself, which credit to him. Um, and so all those things went into my mind. Um, you know, our defense players were over there saying go. And I, I, the team, I've got their support and they got my back on that call, but uh, ultimately it didn't work out. And, uh, so that's what led us to that situation. You mentioned the offense, obviously, not being able to execute. What do you think 
it was on your end with it not being able to run the ball, with it not having Calvin out, out there? What, what made the lack of execution such a big issue today? Yeah, I, I've got credit to East Carolina, um, but I've, I've got no excuse other than we got it can't sit there and say because Calvin's not out there that that's why we're we'll go. We got plenty of playmakers that need to be able uh, to do things and, and be able to step up. Um, you know, like we've shown so often, this offense is capable of anything, but we're also capable of looking um, below par. And I think that, you know, the reason for it, I'm going to, you know, take a long, deep look at this film and see where it is. But, you know, I do think when you know, when a team knows you're going to sit there and pass and you can't run the football, um, it, it doesn't help you much, right? This is a team that blitz, 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 blitz. And they still blitz some this game, but, you know, they were doing more. Um, dropping in coverage, rushing four or three, and um, we weren't able to take advantage of that. And that, I think that in the, in the run game, we should have been able to get some stuff going and they had some timely deals. Um, and the run game, it starts with everybody involved, right? From the play calling with the, the scheme executed to the, the running backs, to the offensive line, to the tight ends, the receivers blocking, and it's not good enough. Brad, how, how do you analyze the defense today? They, they couldn't stop ECU on, on, on third down, but yet they forced them to field goals. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, right, you're pleased with uh, the red zone execution, right? I think the defense, you know, anytime you can hold an opponent to field goals, uh, we do it. You know, I was pleased with the two takeaways um, by Jacoby Francis. You know, I thought he played an excellent game. But you're right, we, you know, I think they targeted Snead 17 times, and he had 13 catches. I don't have the stat sheet on me. Um, and then you're right, the third down, we've got to find a way to get off the field in third down. Um, you know, the quarterback hurt us with his legs in the first half. And then, you know, as the game went on, we just had to find a way to get off. You know, look, the defense guys battled. And anytime you can hold an opponent like they did in the red zone, I was pleased with, obviously, the, the stats, um, you know, aren't going to sit there and say that the defense completely pitched shut up. But uh, those guys out, did out there and battled the offense just to do, and do their job. I know this may not be a way answer fits all, but this is another close game um, that you guys are able to lose. How do you get this team over the hump to, to win some of these close games? Yeah, exactly right. And I think, Frank, part of it, you know, it, pure it comes down to execution because these guys believe there's not a single doubter in our locker room. And so it's not like I go, and that's why you, know, you try to put your thumb on things all season, right? What is it? What, what do we got to do? What do I got to do better? What do I need to improve upon? And there's not a single person in the locker room blaming each other, blaming – they can blame me, but they're not blaming me. They're, they're, they're supportive. They care. They, like I said, they work. They'll go back to work tomorrow because that's the type of young men they are. Um, and so what is it that's going to get us home? You know, simply just probably better execution all in all. And we all got to get a little bit better in everything we do. Now, look, Jacoby Francis went and had two interceptions, but he'll be the first to say, man, Coach, I know I can get better. And that's the type of young men we have, and it ultimately starts with me. One hundred percent up to him. He, he's got a significant injury, and the young man that we know that can't risk further injury. Um, but he battled his tail off. And like I said, he hadn't been able to really practice uh, in a few weeks, and he, he's he's a tough guy. We got a lot of guys out there banged up um, that you know are, are are fighting their tails off because they they care about the other guys in the locker room, um, and you know we've. You know, both of our offensive tackles were barely able to practice this week, but they went out there and competed, um, and, and because they understand what's at risk and they want to, they want to finish this season, the regular season, the right way. Yeah. Jeff, I I haven't. I really, you know, um, I'm not going to sit there and blame one kid. I'm not. Um, you know. In recruiting, uh, you know, this was a recruiting COVID year, so most of our uh, stuff was all off of film. And uh, he, look, David Kemp was a fantastic uh, high school kicker. And that uh, he watches film, and and people that had seen him live raved about how good he was. Um, and I think he still has a bright future at the University of Memphis. Um, he did get hurt before training camp. Um, the last time he was back in game, he was completely healthy. Um, and, you know, obviously had the missteps in Tulsa. 
which led us to, okay, hey, let's just trust Joe Doyle, who was bought here to punt. Um, and you know, Joe's done everything we've asked. You know, it's, uh, and then we, the young man came today, and um, obviously the missed extra point. So it has led to some of the decisions we've made as a staff that I've made. Um, I've never seen anything like it. You know, I'm not going to be one of these guys that's going to say, oh, we're going to hold open kicking chops. Um, I've got faith in the guys. We just have to find ways to get it done. And I don't have a great answer for you, I, I truly. I mean, I wish I could say, hey, it's, hey, it's mechanics. It's it's maybe a mental. I, do, I don't know that. Um, that's one thing that I, I, I've done a poor job in my career, being apt and reverse and how we can get a kicker fixed. Um, but it is, it's it's troubling. It's frustrating. Um, and ultimately, it's on me, you know, to, to, to find ways to be able kick basic extra points to be able to do those things. So these conversations um, don't have to occur. Two more. Hey, Coach, um, I know it's a short week, and you play an opponent that really don't like me. Since the last time you guys went down there, they spanked you. Y'all spanked them real bad. I know they're going to use that as motivation and their rank. So how do you get your team to turn the page on this hard loss and get to a point that you don't need to come out to a slow start this season? Yeah. Here's the one thing I know about this group that I'm going to have the opportunity to be with tomorrow is just like the win versus Mississippi State, just like the loss versus UCF, just like the work win last week versus Session, they understand, okay, that's in the past. we we got to get find ways to go out there and play a great opponent in Houston. We know they're ranked. I think our guys are excited about that. I have no doubt in my mind that group of young men that are going to get on playing with me are going to be as dialed in, as focused, as – as they've ever been, because that's that's what gives me you know hope and pride, and that's why I haven't come up here and said it's all lost. No, because I can look at Jacoby Francis in the eye and say, man, that dude's got my back, and he knows I got his back. And every single young man that's going to get on that plane Thursday night or Thursday afternoon is going to go out in there and, and battle their tails off um, for each other, for, for the for the university, for the name. On, I, I tell them that this before every game, go out there and play for the name on the front and the back of your jersey, and they'll do it, and they care and. Um, so I have no doubt tomorrow they're going to learn from this film and say, okay, okay, how do I get better? And like I said, ultimate starts with me, Terry. And then they're going to say, okay, what do we need? To, what's the plan for Houston? Give us, give us, give us, and, and continue coach me, coach, and, and show us. Let's let's keep working at this thing. I mean, that's that's why I can at least sleep at night because of the character of these young men. Last one, Ryan. You guys obviously now have two and one or two games to be bowl eligible. So at this point, I know Houston's on your mind, but just kind of how much more is that not going to be on? Maybe either adding pressure or something to think about, like, hey, this is one of our goals, and now we got to take care of business. Otherwise, it could possibly slip away these next few games. Yeah, not once have I talked about bowl games, sorry guys. Not once have I talked about that. I, I simply talk about the next game being the most important. This was the most important game uh, of my coaching career. This one was, and we didn't get it done. So we don't. We talk about, and just like we're not going to talk about the bowl games, we're just going to talk about how do we go find a way to execute and beat Houston. And, our, and that's where our guys' focus has to be. Because uh, if we sit there and say, well, if we win this one, that's great. But our guys have their own motivation um, to go out there and, and play as hard as they can and, and do things. And that's, with, without sounding corny or going back to what I was just saying, Terry, that's what uh, is so great about these guys. They believe. It's, they don't need a carrot over their head saying, hey, get to a bowl. They really don't. They're motivated. Um, they they want to work and, and try to find ways to improve. So. Um, we won't talk about a bowl game. We'll just talk about going out there and finding a way to beat a, a ranked Houston team. And our guys will be so darn excited. Um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of these guys, knowing them, they go home tonight, they watch the film, put it to bed, and in the morning they'll say, all right, what can we do for Houston? And uh, so, look, that, that ultimately is a goal for ours. But uh, honestly, I have not talked to them one time about a bowl game. Thank you, guys.